Hey guys, Zal here, and I got a wonderful question from one of the commenters that I'll try and put up on the screen now, asking about what sort of problem solving and critical thinking actually goes into the chemistry major. I know in a lot of videos of other people and ones I've said, I've said chemistry requires lots of problem solving and critical thinking without much more specifics. So in this video, I kind of want to talk about what sort of problems you'll have to solve, what sort of critical thinking and skills you'll need to solve problems in the chemistry major. I'm going to go through each like of the main classes in the chemistry major because there is a lot of variability in the type of problem solving and critical thinking between chemistry classes. So I'm just going to go run through each of them, give the sorts of types of problems you'll have to get and how you'll have to think through them and hopefully shed some light on what people mean when they say critical thinking and problem solving. So to start out, let's talk about the general chemistry one and two classes and the types of problems and thinking you'll have in these classes is relatively similar. They're both your intro chemistry classes and what happens in these is a lot of, for the math part, because math is going to be a part of these intro classes, the math is a lot of equation memorization, basic algebra, sort of stuff like that. You're going to be given word problems and you're going to be able to take the data or numbers and whatever information they get from the word problems and apply them to equations you've learned and it's basically plug and chug for the most part. You just need to be able to get the information out of the word problem, know what equation to apply it to, and then do the algebra to solve the equation. On the other hand of that, there is going to be theory, and this is just basic things, knowing properties and rules and all, how acids and bases work, stuff like that. It's all basic chemistry theory, and that's going to be a lot of recall from memory from whatever you learn in class, and maybe some applications of theory. And a lot of the times these questions work by getting something that's maybe similar to something you answered in class, but having it slightly different, so you have to actually think through the theory and how it would apply to a new situation. But for the most part, that's going to be what you do in general chem. You're going to do some basic memorization, polyatomics and all, theory, and then basic algebra word problems. After general chemistry, your next big main chemistry classes, which is going to use a totally different line of thinking is organic chemistry. And again, pretty similar between organic chems one and two. Once you get into the higher level organic chems, slightly different. But for organic chemistry one, you're gonna to need to do a lot of nomenclature stuff. And that's basically learning all the rules on how to name a molecule. And so if you're given any sort of organic molecule, you should be able to basically run through the list and name that with its IUPAC nomenclature. And so that's a lot of memorization and practice of just learning the rules of naming and then being able to apply it to molecules. Um, and then you get into a bit more difficult problems. You're gonna learn about a lot of reactions in organic chemistry. And so the kind of thinking you're gonna to have to go through here is you're given a uh, set of reagents and your starting molecules and you wanna know what a certain group of reagents is going to do to a starting molecule. So you're going to basically be given a reactant, not know the product, and you're going to have to be able to look at what's reacting and be able to name the product off that. You're going to need to know the sort of reactions that happen. You're going to need to know any extra rules, what's going to happen kind of with your chemical intuition and thermodynamically, and be able to see how these will react to create a completely new organic structure. That's one of the types of questions in organic chemistry. And that's honestly, for your first organic chem classes, the main one. You're gonna be learning mechanisms as well. A lot of that is honestly memory from your notes and remembering how the actual mechanisms work. And of course, once you get these reactants and new molecules you learn about and your mechanisms, a lot of the times you'll be given slightly similar things that are not what you learned and you're going to be expected to try and infer what happens. The one other thing in organic chemistry is chirality and this is a whole different ball game. This is a much more three-dimensional thinking because chirality, if you don't know, is just certain molecules will uh, have different spatial layouts even if they have the same chemical structure. It's like how 
My hands each have five fingers, but they're not perfectly able to overlay each other. And you're going to need to be able to spatially reason those out. A lot of organic chemistry involves spatial reasoning and that sort of types of problem solving. Once you get into organic synthesis, which is usually an elective class, but I'll throw it in here, it's it's much different than the first ones. In the first ones, you're just learning reactions in organic, synthetic organic chemistry, which is if you do organic chemistry, what you would be doing is basically you're given a goal that you're trying to create or a starter, and you just need to fill in the entirety of the blanks. It could be 20 steps or 15 steps of a reaction in between, and you have to fill that all in yourself, and you have to have the right chiral molecule at the end. And this can be super difficult because you're going to need to use protecting groups and a lot of different things. And it's just just big massive puzzle you have to put together through stuff you've learned in your previous organic chemistries. And usually the main thing that makes this hard is you're trying to make a chiral molecule. Moving on, there is biochemistry. And biochemistry of the chemistry classes I've taken, it felt like it needed the least sort of problem solving and critical thinking. A lot of biochemistry just felt like simple theory, memory recall, memorization of certain cycles in biochemistry and naming amino acids sort of stuff. So I felt like a lot of biochemistry was just mostly on theory, recall, and application. You'll have, of course, some problems and Maybe you'll be given something where it's, you're, it's like, this molecule is introduced into the system, how, it'll, how will it affect what's going to happen in your biological system, or you stop this molecule from being active, how will it affect the system, but a lot of it, honestly, just memorization. Then, uh, in organic chemistry, this goes back to a lot of spatial stuff, there wasn't a whole ton of math and the math in inorganic isn't too difficult again it's a lot of basic algebra sort of math but for the most part inorganic chemistry has a lot of theory and application of theory you're going to go over a lot of the electronics of certain inorganic molecules and you're going to need a lot about their orbitals and all so you should have a strong foundation in that but one of the main things about inorganic chemistry was crystal structure and point groups and all, and this is very much a spatial thing. You're going to be given a large inorganic molecule and you're going to have to basically classify that and the way you classify it is basically how it rotates, what mirror planes it has. So you're going to have to manipulate this super spatially and a lot of inorganic is just spatial reasoning, spatial reasoning, spatial reasoning. The main thing you do in inorganic is spatial reasoning, and in that way, it's a bit similar to organic. After this, the problem solving and critical thinking of physical chemistry, which I think is going to be the last chemistry class I go over. A lot of the other chemistry classes are mainly electives, although instrumental analysis is in there, but a lot of that I felt was memorization and basic algebra, uh, sort of like Gen Chem. PCHEM is really, really intensive on math. PCHEM is a math class disguised as a chemistry class. What you're going to be doing in PCHEM is usually quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, and you're going to be able to derive stuff and do equations and all. You're basically the problems you get in PCHEM is a lot of word problems or just straight integral type stuff. So what you're going to need to do in PCHEM is a lot of integrals and derivatives. Think of it as a really advanced calc class and it's you're going to have some chemistry theory and quantum mechanics theory thrown in. But a lot of the critical thinking and problem solving you're doing in PCHEM is super, super math based. So if you're good or bad at math, that's your warning for PCHEM. It's, it's your math, math class. So it's your calculus, physics type math class of chemistry. And I think that covers a lot of the main classes that you're gonna be taking in chemistry and kind of gives you the range of critical thinking. There's classes that are theory and algebra based. There's spatial reasoning that's like inorganic and organic chemistry. And then you have your really hard integral based calculus type critical thinking classes that is going to be in the form of your PCAMP. So I hope this video helped clear up what type of problems and, you know, 
types of stuff you'll have to know going into chemistry classes, and I'll see you guys next time.